Hello and welcome to your first project in JavaScript and this project will be on simple form validation so basically be able to control uh, the results uh, determining whether or not the user typed in what you want in certain text fields uh, so to save time and I still don't think I'll be able to finish this in one video I already created the form um, oh did even spell it right this doesn't really matter the name of it you don't even really need the name action would be mailed to a fake email so it's going to post and on submit return validation and uh, and that and it's going to return so if when this function returns true or false then this will return true or false as we did before uh, and it will determine whether or not it will submit or not so let's create that function just to get that out of the way simple excuse me simple function validation and I'll call it just that. And I created a field set, which is the border that goes around the form. Then a name, which is uh, just, I give an ID of name, email with an ID of email, and the password, I give it a max length of eight, which is sort of important, not really, and an ID of password. And the type is also password as opposed to text. And then a submit button that will say submit on it, and then a reset button that automatically says reset, so I'm not gonna change that. So, looking at it now, this is what it looks like. The field sets that border that goes around. And yeah. So, let's figure out how to do this. So, um, how about, let's work on the text first. What if when we click this and it already, we already had the function written out, and let's say we want certain red text to pop up saying stuff like invalid this or invalid that. So let's create our paragraph tags. So we're going to have to do that within our body tags. So. Let's give this an ID of, I don't know, invalid1. So I'll copy this, paste and paste. This will be invalid, whoa, geez, I don't even, two, three. And then for the top one, what do we want it to say? You must type in a name. For the second one, let's just have it say invalid email. And then for the last one, password must contain one uppercase and one lower case letter. Uh, whoops. There we go. And th yeah, that's what we're going to do for the restrictions for the password, just the upper and lower case, which is a lot more work than you think it is, uh, which is why I don't think we'll be able to finish this in time. But all right, so if I refresh the page, oh uh, yeah, there's all our text, but we're going to want to be able to move them. And I already created style tags up here, so let's edit them this way. So, invalid one. I hope I spelled all, spell all these right. Let's first mess with the color. And then, whoops, position will be absolute, so we can control exactly where it goes. And then for the top, and then the distance from the left, uh, you'll have to do trial and error. This is why I didn't leave these blank at first, because you're going to want them blank at first. But we want to be able to see where they're going when you first move them around. So for this one, I'm going to want it to be 0 pixels, and then this next one, 220 pixels. Uh, so now I'm just going to copy and paste all of this. For the other two as well. So this will be number 2. Uh, for this one, I'm going to want it 23 here and then 215 actually then for the third one and even if it still comes out wrong I can still fix it 45 and 245 well not 2450 so let's see where all the text lands um, oh one of them didn't work uh, invalid oh whoops there we go invalid three so if I refresh the page there you go now everything is now all the text is exactly where we're we'll want them to be. So that's it about that, really. So uh, the next thing that we're going to have to do then is to actually create the function. So uh, we already have the function created. So uh, the very first thing that I'm going to do is let's say we want all of these to pop up at the same time. If we just do the return true and false in each if statement that we create, then it will only put the error message next to that one. So what I'm going to do is, and this will make sense in a, in a later, is create a 
variable called invalid and set it equal to zero. And what will happen is any time that uh, something doesn't turn out the way we want it in an if statement, we'll just add one to this. Then at the end, if it's not equal to zero, then then uh, then it returns false at that point. So at the beginning, every time they click the button, we have to make sure the invalid goes back to zero so that they have a chance for it working again. Oh, okay. So let's create our first if statement. So in here, we're gonna have to type in document dot get element by ID, and then within this, we'll access the name. We're just gonna do the name part first. I don't know why I have this stuff out for. Uh, and then we'll have to type in value, so we'll get that. And then if it's equal to an empty string. And if it is empty, equal to an empty string, well, let's see what we're going to do. We're going to have to type in document dot get element by ID. And type in invalid one dot inner HTML. Yes, we are using this once again. And then we're going to control what it says. So you must type in a name. So at this point, we can just cut what, what's here so it's no longer visible. And just make it so if they submit this and it's an empty string, it'll say you must type in a name. That text will appear. And then we're going to go invalid plus or equals one, or plus equals one. So this will automatically make it false no matter what happens in the future, but it will still continue with the code. Then we're going to have to create an else. And then in here, we type in the got element for ID. I'll just copy and paste this. Um, so if they do this again and it turns out to be true, then if this word is already here, we can make it so it will disappear, so it will no longer be there. Uh, so um, allow me to actually do the invalid stuff next, just so it's a little bit more clear. So what you're going to do here is if, and this will be at the bottom of everything, you're going to go invalid, and then not equal to zero. So if it's no longer equal to zero, so like here it's adding one, so it's going to no longer be equal to zero, uh, return false, and then an else, return true. So let's see how this works. So I click save, and then if I refresh the page, um, this these two, I didn't, I didn't get rid of these yet. But let's see what happens if we don't turn it in a name. See, now that happened. If I refresh the page, and then type in Adam, and click submit, now it works. So that's really cool. You, gotta, you have to admit, that that is really, really cool. Um, if I type in Adam, click, whoops. If I have nothing in there, I click submit, and that happens. If I type in it again, so there is something there, I click submit. Notice how it disappeared. It's no longer there anymore. So that's that's really cool. It's validation right there. Uh, and so yeah, this is our first one right here. So um, name of user. So for this next one, we're going to want to put in their email. Now the next thing we're going to check is their email. So, uh, in order to check a valid email, basically you just want to check to see if they have an at sign. So, we're going to want to type in an if, and then document, whoops, sorry, get elements by ID, and then in here we're going to go email, and then we're going to type in the value, dot value property, because we want to actually see the text, and then we're going to type in index of. So it's going to return the the index number of wherever the following is, or wherever it starts. So we're going to type in an at symbol, so it's going to look for that at right there. Um, then the next thing you want to do is type in is equal to negative 1. And basically what that is, and I, I don't know what that is, negative 1 is returned if it doesn't exist. So if it doesn't exist, then the following is going to execute. So basically it's going to be the same as up here. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to just simply paste this so the invalid will go up plus equals one again. I'll change this to invalid two and 
I'll cut and paste this, cut, and then I'll paste this right here for invalid email. And then for the else, what we'll do is, oh, whoops, is take this, copy, and paste. So if they did put in a valid email, you want to make sure if this invalid email is already written that it'll disappear for their sake. So invalid two, make sure we hit the right ID, and let's refresh the page. So now it's gone, and if I click submit, we get invalid email, and you must type in a name. If I type in that, and I click submit, notice that went away, but the email is still there. I type in a bunch of stuff, still doesn't work. I type in an at sign, and now it does work, and it disappeared. So that's really cool. So now both name and email work, and the little messages will pop up with it. Now the last one is actually the most difficult. So we have name of user, email, final validation, okay. This is the biggie. This one is a little tough. Password, I don't know. Check. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. Okay, so I'm I'm actually doing really well with this. So before we actually get in this, well, you know what? Um what we're going to have to do is count the characters. We're going to have to go through each character and then basically change it to both an uppercase and a lowercase and check it with the original to see if it changed. And we have to check both to make sure that it has both an uppercase and a lowercase. So we're basically going to have a loop within a loop. So first we have to create a loop, a while loop. And we're going to want i that starts at 0 less than the length of whatever the user typed in. So these are two variables we're now going to have to create outside of our function, outside of our function. So var i is equal to 0. And just for time's sake, since I already told you that we're going to do a separate loop inside, we'll be using J in that one. And what else are we going to have to do? We have to do the length. Make sure I spell that right. And we're not going to initialize the length yet. Only, only create it. So I is less than length. So, um, well actually, now that we did that, we're going to have to initialize the length inside the function. So we'll set that equal to document dot get element whoops by ID and then inside that we're gonna have to type in the password because that's the ID that we want to access and then dot value dot length and then that should return us the the length of the of uh, the password whatever you typed in which can't be any more than eight so while I is less than the length uh, we're gonna have this happen so first, we're going to have to actually create another variable. We're going to have to create the variable that it compares to. I know, this is so much. All of a sudden, we've like tripled the number of variables we've had in this. So you create another one called compare. And then, in here, we type in compare will be equal to, and then document dot get element by ID. And then inside that, type in password. And then outside of this, we're going to have to type in value dot, whoops, uh, char at, which stands for character at, and inside that, i. Because now it's going to, when we go through the loop, it's going to check for each character as it's going through the loop. And then we're going to want to change it to uppercase, I believe, right? And then we're going to have to create an if statement inside of this. So in this if statement, we're going to have document dot get element by ID and then in this in this password again and oh geez I have too many quotes and oh my goodness this is too much um, dot value dot char at and then I'm gonna have to stop it here because um, I'm running out of time, so this is going to have to continue in the next video. So just remember right where we were, and I'll see you next time.